Hey Flosstube, it's Kim, notes from my needle. It's been a whole month since I last made a video. October kind of got away from me. We had a lot going on. Um, we had Thanksgiving here in Canada on October the 8th, so that was busy. We had a big turkey dinner. We didn't have any family in. It was just like my husband, myself, and our children. But still, it it's busy making a large meal like that. Um, we did also have a lot going on. My daughter is in brownies and October is when they get their girl guide cookies. So we had to help her sell her cookies. We also closed out our storage unit. We were going to sell our home, but we decided to kind of let that go for another year or so. Uh, my husband will possibly have to be away next summer and we didn't really like the idea of my having to sell our current home, find another home that he might like sight unseen, plus all the stuff that goes along with moving by myself, which I appreciate and I really did not want to have to do by myself. We've also been busy getting ready for Halloween. I just had a party, costume party at a friend's place this past weekend that I had to make a costume for. And I'm also making a costume for my daughter. She wants to be a T-Rex. And we couldn't find a T-Rex costume that was less than $100. So I just told her I would make her one. So I've been busy doing that as well. She's obsessed with Jurassic World. She's obsessed with dinosaurs. And I mean, mom's got to do what a mom's got to do to make the kid happy, right? Um, I also had a birthday. So I was kind of busy with that. We went out and had a nice dinner and... I got some gifts, I got a new tattoo, which I'm super pleased with, and maybe, I don't know, maybe I have some poor time management skills, I don't know, we've just been really, really super busy, it just seems like October has just been bam, bam, bam for busyness. So anyway, I guess I'll jump right in and I'll go with whips. I have five whips on the go right now. Three of them are Joan Elliott pieces, um, which are kind of on an, I don't know, like a hiatus with no end date in sight. I may try to take out the magical unicorn and finish that up because my daughter really wants her unicorn because it is for her. She's kind of jealous that her brother got his Avengers piece and I finished that all off and she's still waiting on her unicorn. So I may take that out and try to finish it, but I mean, I'm just not feeling them. I don't know what it is because I love Joan Elliott's designs. She creates beautiful charts and I've done designs of hers in the past, but I think these three that I've picked are just so intensive with all the Krynik and the beading and the, I mean, there's no specialty stitches, but they're large pieces. They're very large pieces. Um... I mean, now that I've discovered Petite Treasure Braid, I will probably never purchase Krynik ever again. I'll use what I have left, but I don't know. I'm I'm just not feeling those pieces. The ones that I've been working on lately, and I probably should have pre-prepared and had this stuff already taken out of the bag, but, you know, we're just going to roll with it. I'm working on the Hands-On Design Block Party Mend. This is what I have finished so far. I'm really loving doing it. Um, it's my first time working with Weeks Dye Works and Gast, and I'm really enjoying stitching with both of those threads. They're really, really nice to stitch with. Um, it is also my first time using John James needles. I love these. I don't think I will ever go back to using the other needles I was using, which I believe were just the the DMC needles. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they were the DM they were either DMC or Anchor, but they were gold plated and the John James ones are just much nicer, I find, especially when I'm working on even weave and not on Ada. I just like them a lot better. They seem to go through the fabric a lot smoother. Sorry if it seems like I'm fidgety. I'm like itchy and it's weird. The other whip that I have on the go is the Tiny Modernist Haunted Mansion. And that's what I have completed. Let's see if I can get it all in the frame, which I don't think. Oh, wait, there we go. Um, the All of the rooms have been released now. As you can see, like I kind of hopped over and 
started room five before I did room four, but only because I already have all of this side of the frame, like the house filled in. Um, I did start, I did put some blending filament in with the skeleton just to make them a little bit more sparkly. I'm kind of regretting that I didn't do it with the ghosts, but I'm not going to pull them out to do that. Um, the white doesn't show up very well on this fabric. I dyed it myself and I have since learned that the dye always comes out lighter than what you thought and when I had it in the dye it looked really really dark to me so I think I took it out too early and if I was to dye my own fabric again I think I'd err more on the side of it being too dark as opposed to it being too light. I think though if I just put a piece of white quilters cotton on the back side of that piece before I turn it into a wall hanging the white in the quilters cotton might make the white in the cross stitch piece pop pop more um I don't know I haven't tried it yet but we'll see if that works I'm hoping so because obviously I'm not going to restitch that um and in hindsight I don't know if I would do a sal again like I really enjoy that sal and I really like the pattern but if I'm being honest it stressed me out like Every time I knew, like I'm not a fast stitcher, and every time a new room came out, I felt like, oh my god, I need to get this done, I need to get this done, because I've seen everybody else's pictures on Instagram, and I was like, oh my god, all these people have these done so quickly, and I, I don't know, it just stressed me out. Like, I know that's kind of silly to be comparing myself to people on Instagram that, like, are stitching them like crazy, but, I don't know, I guess it's human nature to kind of compare yourself to other people I don't know I I think if I was to do another sal I would do a smaller one that had less going on outside the frame because especially the moon and the roof like the top of that chart I felt like it took me forever to do that and it was like days of just trying to stitch that in and I don't know I mean, I like Tiny Modernist, and their charts are amazing. I just don't know if I'd ever do one of the sows again. So I guess I'll move on to finishes. I have quite a few finishes because I've been obsessed with Christmas and stitching smaller charts at the moment. First one I have done is Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery, Pumpkin Spice and Everything Nice. I really love how it turned out. I love the colors in it. It's all the called for DMC. And I put it on one of the fabrics that I got in that kind of grab bag of fabrics that I purchased on a Facebook group. I have no idea what count it is. I just know it's an even weave. And I have another piece in the same color. So I think I'm going to buy the other chart that just came out, the I Love Fall Most of All, and do them both together to kind of have them out during the fall time because I think it would it would be nice. I have a little... I know I've mentioned it before, when you come into my entryway, there's a wall straight when you come in the door, but the wall has kind of like, at the top has a little shelf, and then there's the rest of the wall that goes up, it's built in, and it's great for putting like little knickknacks or little seasonal trinkets up there. Right now I have an orchid up there that I really like, I got for my birthday, and I think it would just some of these little pieces would look really nice up there. I usually decorate it with little Christmas figurines and a little string of Christmas lights and a little mini bunting I made for Christmas so that that's what you see when you first come in the house. Anyway, that was a tangent. Let's get back to my finishes. <laughs> uh, the next one I have is Snow Trio, Snowman Trio from Country Cottage Needleworks. I really, really liked stitching this. I love doing it. It turned out really great. Um, it's a little bit bigger than what I thought it was going to be. So I'm wondering if I should finish it as an ornament or if I should finish it as a flat fold. I'm not sure if that would be too big to hang off my tree. I mean, I don't care. I mean, but I don't know. I might finish it as a little ornament pillow or something or maybe wrap it in mat board and do it as, um, Vonna Pfeiffer, the Twisted Stitcher, does a tutorial on these gift tag ornaments. I might do it something similar to that, only not do it as a gift tag on the top. I'm not sure. I'm not really sure how I want to finish it yet. I've also finished uh, one of the Welcome to the Forests, the Raccoon. I'm really loving this. 
I have the deer I still have to stitch and I think I'm definitely going to do a flat fold for those and put those out with the blocks when I finish those as well. The next finish I have is Cardinal Winter. And this is by Little House Needleworks as well. And I really, really love this one. I was going to go to the fabric store. I actually did go to the fabric store when I bought the fabric for my daughter's Halloween costume. And they did have some Christmas fabrics out, but I was hoping to get something with cardinals on it to back it with. They didn't have anything like that. Um, so I do have some buffalo check, some red and black buffalo check that I might put on the back of it. But... I'm not sure yet. I do have to go to the fabric store again because I'm going to pick up some supplies to make a dog bed for my dog. So hopefully they have more Christmas fabrics out when I go back. And my last finish. I love this so much. It's the Lizzie Kate Snowman 10. Bring it in a little bit closer. All of this in here, you can see. Ooh, yeah, that's some good sparkle. That's... DMC light effects. I can't remember which shade I used and I stitched that one over two and that made stitching with it so much easier than doing it two over two. I, I stitched with the two over two on my um, Shoe for the Stars Stitchrovia project, Emma Congdon, and it was so the bane of my existence to stitch with it. It was horrible, but using only one strand made it a lot better. I used basically none of the called for colors. Um, this red was the only called for color I had in my stash. I just matched up as best I could what I thought the colors looked like. There is supposed to be some beading on the top and on the bottom, but I didn't like the look of it and I'm not going to do that. And these buttons are buttons I pulled out of my stash that I have kitted up to do the Lizzie Kate Boo Club. And I mean, I have 40 or more of these tiny little buttons, and I don't think the Boo Club needs 40 buttons. So yeah, I'm really pleased with how it turned out. I haven't decided how I'm going to finish it yet. I'm either going to turn it into a long pillow, and or I'm going to do it as a long, like skinny-ish flat fold to display at Christmas time. I'm thinking the flat fold might be a better option just because where we're living now we have limited storage space and if it's a flat fold then it's a lot easier to store in and amongst my other Christmas things without having to buy like another bin or anything like that. All right um so I guess I'll move on to my purchases. Sorry I completely lost my train of thought there for a second. Basically the only thing I've purchased recently is finishing supplies. So I bought to finish the Frosted Pumpkin Pumpkin Spice. I bought some faux leaves to put on the top. It came with little acorns too. I'm not sure if I'm going to use those or not. I also bought this fabric to back it in because I think I'm going to block finish it like they show on the website and in the pattern itself. And I thought that would go really nice with the colors in the, in the floss and everything. And... I bought the pins because I didn't have any tiny little straight pins. So I bought those. I also bought a couple of different ribbons and twine for that. I'm really loving this plaid with the, the uh, metallic through it. I do also have some burlap ribbon that I think I might use. It's a little bit wider than this and I think I might use that over top just and kind of layer it up and see how I feel. And they didn't have the blocks at my Michaels. They just had the sheets. So I just bought one of these and I figured I will cut it down and cut it to size and then glue two pieces together and make it a little thicker to turn it into a block. And hopefully that works out. I know cutting this is probably going to make the biggest mess ever, but hopefully it turns out. I may possibly film when I do that. If I can, I film all of my videos on my cell phone and then upload them. And if I can figure out how to position the cell phone so that you could see down to what I'm looking at as opposed to having to prop it up where you can see my face, then I'll definitely film that and post it. Um, I did find some fat quarters at my dollar store for $1.50 a piece, which was kind of random, but I, I really liked the fabric, so I bought it. 
this blue floral. I really like it. I'm not sure what I'm going to use it for yet, but I'm sure I'll find something. Use it for some sort of pillow backing or, you know, maybe make a project bag or an oceans bag or something out of it. And I also bought a red floral on a white background, which is also really pretty. So I picked that up. And I did also, when I was at the craft store, buy this Christmas fat quarter, this blue snowflake, which I really, really like. Um, I think I'm going to use this because there's a lot of similar blues in the Lizzie Kate snowman that I just finished. I think I'm going to use this for, for that project. And if I have some left over, I might use it on the snowman trio. I'm not sure. I have another fabric that has a blue background that has little mini snowmans printed on it and that might work as well. I, ha I haven't committed to either yet. And then I did also pick up a few other things. Um, back when uh, Michelle Garrett Bendy Stitchy was posting things regularly on her Instagram for Alzheimer's, Vanna Pfeiffer, the Twisted Stitcher, had sent her a bunch of items that had been finished by her to auction off. And one of the items was a cross stitch snowman and it was finished in a, a one of those plastic ornaments that split in half that you can fill with whatever you like. And I thought that that was absolutely fantastic. So I found a snowman pattern that I liked. So I got the Frosty Flakes pattern by Little House Needleworks. I'm going to stitch it on a piece of fabric one over one. I think 28 count will probably be sufficient to do one over one. And then I bought the little ornament so I could basic I could make two if I wanted to because they each have the the hanger part and I'm gonna back it with the mat board and then I bought the little iridescent snowflakes to stick in there too the only thing that I couldn't find was the micro pom-pom trim and that's only because Michaels only carries that here in my town anyway at Christmas time and I didn't want to order it on, off eBay or Etsy because I kind of want to, I'm in Christmas mode now. I kind of want to finish it. So I'm just going to wait and see if Michaels gets it in within the next couple of weeks because they've already started putting their Christmas stuff up and discounting all the Halloween stuff. I did see the micro trim at Walmart, but it came in a pack with some other trims and it's all like monochrome. And I know that if I buy white pom-pom trim, like, I'm going to get white rickrack and white, there was like another trim in there, but I'm never going to use the other trim, so it seemed kind of like a waste of money. But I mean, worst comes to worst, at least I know I can get enough of it to do that one project from Walmart, and it's not going to be super expensive. Um, so that's basically it. I did have one kind of, I don't know if it's a problem, more like, I don't, I don't really know what to do. I bought this pattern from Brooks Books on Etsy. I mean, it's a black and white picture, so it doesn't really do it justice. But all of these are done on perforated paper, then they're all attached with different chronic cords and ribbons and beads and everything else. And I bought it when she was having a sale. And I really, really liked it. And I was, The Wizard of Oz is one of my favorite all-time movies. So I'm like, oh my God, Oz Santa, that'll be perfect for my Christmas tree. And I can't wait to stitch it. But then as I'm reading through all of the things that they've used to stitch this with, first of all, like, that that's the, that's the thread list. Like, look at the amount of threads in that. That's a lot of colors in there. And then there's, you know, there's beads. Okay, so there's one package of Mill Hill beads, that's fine. But then there's four packages of something called Toho beads that I've never heard of, ever, in my life. I don't even know where to buy these. Okay, so no problem. You can convert those to, D to not DMC, to Mill Hill. You could, there's lists online, you can convert them, no big deal. Well, then there's this whole list of... DMC color infusion memory threads and metallic ribbon and chronic chenille and facets and it just seems like a lot and then when I'm reading some of the instructions it just seems very very complicated 
I'm just curious if anybody else has done any of these ornaments that have all of these like accoutrement to them and if they did them as charted for one or if they kind of edited out things and just did their own thing with it because I'm not gonna lie I'm really daunted by how complicated it seems or how complicated it seems in my brain anyway um it just seems very very like you need to be some sort of cross stitch wizard in order to put it together if I'm being perfectly honest but yeah so if anybody's ever done one and has some tips on how to make it seem a little less daunting those would be greatly appreciated and other than that I just have that's pretty much it I mean I have a couple of shout outs uh, Leslie Hurley she put a really nice comment on one of my videos and so I went over to her channel and checked her out and I watched her most recent video and then I watched like three more videos after that and I really like the stuff that she's stitching um, she is doing the Blackberry House by Plum Street Samplers and it's gorgeous it's huge but it's gorgeous and she just I just like watching her she's fun to watch and I discovered um, a new-ish person. I mean, she's not super new. She has 12 videos, but it's Little House of Stitches. And I just love listening to her. She has, like, Stitch With Me's and, like, Tea Time videos and flip throughs. And she's just really enjoyable to listen to and watch. She's in the UK, but she's originally from South Africa, so she has that great accent, too. And, yeah, so if you haven't checked either of those two people out, you should totally check them out. And that's it. That's all I have. Hopefully it won't be another month before I make another video, but I mean, I'm starting to gear into Christmas stitching, so I think I'll have some more stuff with finishing and uh, doing more Christmassy type projects. Anyway, I hope you are all doing great wherever you are in the world, and until next time, bye!